Visual displays of data are more than just pretty pictures and graphs of your data. They bring life and meaning to the values that you have in your data set. A good visual display of data tells a story and conveys something important about the data you've observed. In this class, we're going to see many different types of displays of data, and in this particular module, we'll see different ways we can use Jump to get displays of data that tell a story. To start, one of the most important displays of data we'll see will be frequency distributions, or graphical displays of the frequencies of particular outcomes. Now, frequency distribution graphs are often called histograms when displaying frequencies for continuous data. But let me show you what I mean. Let's look at the cups of coffee consumed each day for 10 individuals in the psychology department I asked. So 2, 4, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, 0, 2, and 1. Now, just looking at these data in a list here doesn't convey much about the meaning in the numbers. We can sort of get a sense of where the center is. Of course, we could probably compute a mean in our heads, but seeing the data in a visualization will bring life into the numbers. So let's switch over to jump and let's actually work with those data. In the module journal, we can expand the section for frequency distributions and you can click that first link for coffee consumed. Now I want to pause and talk a minute about how we've entered the data. Notice there's plenty of different ways we could have entered the data. We could have had 10 columns representing the 10 different measurements, but the best way to think about entering data is that each row should be a unit of sampling. And by that I mean an individual. Typically, when we take samples, each person represents a unit. So, we want 10 rows for the 10 units we've observed. Now, another good convention or another good habit to get in is always have a column that identifies the person or the unit. In this case, I made a column and I added the values 1 through 10 to represent the 10 individuals that were a part of this data collection. For each of these individuals, we have a separate column that identifies the other variable, that is, how many cups of coffee they said they drank. To obtain a frequency distribution plot of the cups of coffee, or rather the measurements that we obtained over these 10 individuals, we'll use the distribution platform, which we saw in the introduction to Jump. Again, we find that under the Analyze menu, Distribution. Remember, the distribution platform is useful anytime we're trying to understand the characteristics of a single variable. In this case, the variable we want to understand is cups of coffee. I'll select cups of coffee and click it into the Y role. Person is in our data set, but we won't use it for visualizing cups of coffee. Person here is in our data set just so we can keep track of which individual we have. This is especially useful if down the line we discover that one of our individuals gave us bad data. It would be very difficult to go back and remove an individual's data if we don't know which row counted as each person. So that's just there to keep track of what data we've collected. Now with cups of coffee in the Y roll, I'm going to click OK and Jump will produce the distribution output. Notice the first person is selected in our data set, which is why we have one box selected in here. To deselect all the columns and all the rows, you can click in the sections right here. Clicking in the section on the lower side deselects the rows. Clicking in the section on the top side deselects columns. The opposite of this is holding down the shift key and clicking in the lower section, which will select all the rows in the data set, and shift clicking in the top section selects all the columns. This is useful to remember when you want to deselect all the columns and rows, just click in both of the little sections there. Now that we have the distribution output obtained, let's take a minute to look at what it's showing us. Right away, we can see that we have a symmetric distribution. That is, we have as many observations above as we do below and in equal frequencies. Now we'll come back to describing the shapes of distributions, but at the first glance, just notice what observations we have and what Jump is doing to display these observations. Now first, look at the axis. What we have in a frequency distribution plot is what is called bins. Now right now, the bin size is one unit. So we go from zero to one, from one to two, two to three, etc. To change the bin sizes, that is to change how many observations fall into a particular bin, we can do a couple of different things. I'm going to show you one way to do this by going to the Tools menu and selecting the Graver tool. The Graver tool allows us to click and drag to the right or to the left on these bars, and I want you to see what happens. I'll click on the bars and drag to the left, 
which will increase the size of the bins. Notice what just happened. Our bins now are spanning two. So the lowest bin goes from negative one to positive one, and what we're seeing here is that there's one individual, the person who said they drank zero cups of coffee, who falls into this bin. Notice that this is negative one to positive one exclusive. A value of one does not count in the bin that goes from negative one to positive one. Now the next bin is from positive one to positive three. Let me click that bin and you'll see that these are the individuals that count in that bin. In fact, we can make this a little more clear and why the heights of the bars are what they are. By going to the red triangle next to cups of coffee, going to histogram options, and going to show counts. When I turn on counts, we'll see the number of individuals in our data set that are counting in each of these bins. Notice in the final bin, from three to five, we have three individuals in the data set that count in that section. If we go back to the tools menu and reselect the graver tool, we can click and drag to the right to return the bins to the size they were before, a bin size of one. Notice that different bin sizes will return different outputs, but they're all displaying in essence the same data. It's just a matter of how many bins you want to capture the different categories or frequencies in your data. I'm gonna go back to the tools menu, select the arrow key, and this time I'm gonna double click on the Y axis. When I double click on the axis, we get the Y axis specification window. This is another way we can change the bin sizes under the increment section. In the increment section, we now have one, which is a bin size of one or a bin width of one. If I change this value to be two and click OK, Jump will again change the bin sizes for us. This time our lowest bin starts at zero because that's what we were specifying in the axis settings. If I double click to go back to the axis setting, I'll set the increment back to one and click OK, and again we'll return to the original visualization. Now with a data set as small as this, it may not be needed for us to get a visualization of the frequencies, but let's open another data set and see why the distribution platform is such a useful way to look at our data. 